So what we're going to review in this video is five different things all pertaining to Keepa. The first thing we're going to look at is infringement complaints. Now a lot of people are downloading uh, widgets that will tell you if the product you're about to purchase has an infringement complaint. We advise against those widgets only because they are only operating off of user submissions. I rather show you how to analyze a listing to understand if you are going to receive an infringement complaint without using one of those widgets. Now, if you wanted to have one of those widgets, is it harmful? Absolutely not. But we found through our product research that sometimes that widget will tell us that we shouldn't sell a product when really we consistently sell it and we've been consistently selling it and we've never received an IP complaint. So there's some inaccuracies with those widgets. So you should fully understand how to review the third keep a chart so you can know if the product's going to receive an infringement complaint. And then we're going to look at four different listings using Keeper. We're going to look at a good listing to buy, a listing that has a low dip and you should stay away from, and then a listing that Amazon is priced much higher and it's okay to purchase on even though they are selling. And then we're going to look at a listing that um, Amazon is dominating. So this first listing here, Global Carrot and GK Hair, um, this product we have received an infringement complaint for, so I know it receives infringement complaints. The first thing you want to check when you're looking at this is how many sellers on the listing. So here you can see that there's one seller because there's no option to click on the back end of this page. There's no option to review the sellers page. And you can see that that one seller is GK Hair, who is actually the manufacturer of this shampoo. So that's a red flag right away. One seller, and it's the manufacturer, red flag. Something should stand out to you that you should stay away from this product. But let's dive a little deeper into it. So now we're gonna scroll down to Keepa. Something else that pops out is the price is super consistent. So usually when the price is super consistent, it means that the brand is selling on it, they're dominating the buy box, they don't have to decrease it, they don't have to raise it, they just set their price and forget it. So what you really wanna be paying attention to is this graph here. Over here, all the way to the left in January, it had two sellers, and then it went right here, it dropped to one seller. And then you scroll more to the right, and you can see it's back to two sellers right here and then it was only at two sellers for a couple days and then a couple days later two days later it's back down to one seller and then it's consistently one seller and you're going to see that same pattern if you look at this listing here as well so one seller and then it had two sellers and then back down to one seller right here they kicked this seller off right there and then back to two sellers and then they got this seller removed so on and so forth so what that's telling me is that this brand is monitoring this listing and they're letting amazon know hey which is technically illegal or wrong but they do it anyway they're letting amazon know hey this seller's selling on my listing which isn't even a real thing um, it's called selective distribution and hopefully Amazon gets rid of it but it's something that us sellers need to be aware of that there's a possibility that some of these companies may submit infringement complaints so it's information like this that you're looking out for consistent drops from multiple sellers to one seller consistent listed price and that and that the one seller on the listing is the brand or the manufacturer or consistently in the buy box is a seller who's representing the brand a lot of listings could have only one seller as well um, that's not the brand but they represent the brand so next thing we're going to look at here is okay 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 hold on hold on hold on hold on Eric mentioned a few things here. We were specifically looking at a brand that is selling on a listing. But there are also sellers who sell exclusively for brands. And the way that you can figure that out is if, same thing, going to the bottom of this keeper chart here and seeing if the offers, the bottom line there, is... Um, one sometimes fluctuates up to two then that seller gets kicked off and it's back to one and looking at a few different ASINs of that specific brand and seeing if there's only one seller so come on Chachi click the listing let's go all right so um let's let's take a look at this uh Dr. Bronner's listing right here click it all right so take a take a look at this listing here what we have 
what we have is Dr. Bronner's is the brand right up here. And then when we look at the seller, the seller is Quiver. Dr. Bronner's the brand, seller, Quiver. Okay, take me to another listing. Okay, um, how about this one right over here? Yep, yep, click that. Okay, here we go. It's another Dr. Bronner scent, a two pack. Dr. Bronner's is the brand, Quiver is the seller. And let's get out of this. Okay, um, and if you actually, let's stop right here before we go to another one. Just look, I mean, there, there's a couple listings that have multiple sellers, like this one here has five sellers. Um, this one here also has two, but prominently you see one seller, one seller. Let's click on another one that's one seller. Uh, let's click, let's, yep, click, click on that one right there. Okay, and what do we have? We have the Dr. Bronner's brand and Quiver is the seller. So remember when you are doing your ASIN analyzing, I, it's not only brands that you're looking for that are on the listing, because a lot of times a brand might be on a listing. However, there are other sellers on the listing and the brand actually understands the way the world works and they understand uh, the brand is not trying to violate the law by getting sellers kicked off lying to Amazon, you know, um, interference of our Amazon contract, right? And when you join Amazon, you as a seller, you make an agreement to those terms of services and guidelines. By signing up with Amazon, you're signing a contract that you're gonna follow those guidelines. And then when a brand comes in and makes a false accusation against you, that can interfere with your progress. But that's a whole nother subject I'm not gonna get into now. Right now, I'm just trying to ensure that you don't get hit with an IP complaint. So Eric mentioned if there's a brand on a listing and the brand is the only seller, quickly go down to keep up and check the offers. You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing if it's not the brand that's on a listing but there's only one specific seller because that specific seller can have exclusivity and then they might be sending out IP complaints um, sort of like a specific seller was doing with Voorhees for the past uh, couple years, right? Uh, but let's not get into that too. So make sure to check these listings and really the best place to look is at the bottom of the Keeper graph. Uh, if you see that there is one offer, sometimes it pops up to two, or if you see that there was 12 offers, 15 offers at one time, and then it quickly drops down uh, to one or two, that means there was a blanket statement put across that ASIN against all sellers on that ASIN, maybe except for one who had exclusivity or was working directly with the brand. Um, and as long as you're looking at these charts, paying attention to the offers, you will be safe a majority of the time. I mean, there is always risk in running a business. There is a possibility that an ASIN that you pick up that has never had an IP complaint before, a week after you pick it up, the day after you pick it up, maybe a year after selling it without issues, the brand might file an IP complaint. But as long as you're playing your cards right and you're mitigating those losses and mitigating that risk, you will continue to grow and scale your business. Stay lit. We have four different listings that we're going to take a look at and analyze Keepa a little bit so you can get a better understanding of how to review Keepa. So the first one we're going to look at is, let's do a search here. Oh, interesting. Looks like the product's not popping up. So if you ever run into this where you search a product, an ASIN in Seller Central and it doesn't pop up, a quick fix is to go to your add a product on in the catalog on seller central and you just paste that ASIN in there and boom here it is it pops up so what that's telling me when I searched 
in this search box and it didn't pop up, but I have a feeling it exists because maybe I sold it before and now all of a sudden I can't find it. If you search it through Seller Central, list a product, it will actually pop up and it's telling me that it's out of stock. So it's not even listed in their catalog right now because there's no available sellers. So we could expand this and look at it a little more. And here it is and, and it says exactly that, currently unavailable. So if you ever can't find a listing, you just go over to here to list a new product and it will pop up. And if it doesn't pop up, that means it really doesn't exist anymore. So this is a, a keep a chart that I would consider a good keep a chart. This is a keep a chart you really want to be paying attention to. So here you can see the price is consistent. There's no orange here indicating Amazon jumps on this listing. Down here on the third graph, there's no drastic drops indicating that there's IP complaints being submitted and sellers are being kicked off. Here you can see there's a minor drop, but it looks like people are just running out of stock. Um, but the price is very consistent. Uh, everything just checks out on this listing. This is definitely a product that, that passes all my checks when I'm checking on Keepa. And even if we go back even further, you could see that when it first started, it was priced really high, and then it kind of found its marketplace value of what the consumer's interested in paying for this product. And it's right around $18. Sometimes it gets a little higher, and then you could see that the rank actually increases so when the product price increases it's very common that the rank increases as well because not as many customers are interested in it so this is a this is the kind of keep a chart you're looking for when you're trying to find a product to list on amazon this is one of the keep a charts you're looking for now this other product we're going to look at is this mitchum three pack and so right away what stands out to me is it has a low dip here Right, so you can see we're probably making some money here. It's a three pack, so 1749, we're probably making some money, but then consistently, consistently, the price just keeps getting lower and lower and lower, and then it gets a little higher, and then it kind of evens out at 1299. This is a product that will always wave a red flag in front of my face, and I'm like, hey, well, that's interesting. Um, the rank's getting lower, but the price is getting lower, maybe. People are just being really competitive. Everybody's sourcing it, so there's a lot of sellers on this listing. Right now, it's currently unavailable, but this is always a red flag here. Um, whenever you see this, this steady decline in price, means it's just getting lower and lower and lower. So I, just because of that decrease, would stay away from this listing. Now, the next listing we're gonna look at is a listing where Amazon is priced higher. So here, once again, we have a Mitchum. This is a six pack. And now this is an exception to the rule where you could sell on a listing that Amazon is selling on. And what you are looking for is a consistent buy box price that's much lower than Amazon's listed price. So you can see here when I hover over these dots, the buy box price is an FBA seller at 1635 and Amazon's listed way up top at 2694. Right, and even when Amazon drops their price over here, the buy box seller is at 16.63, and Amazon's almost a dollar fifty higher at 17.74. And if we expand this to a year, we'll see that common trend here that Amazon's always listed much higher on this listing, sometimes over ten dollars more than what the buy box price is. So whenever I see Amazon on a listing like this, I'm perfectly okay, and you should be perfectly okay jumping all over this listing because that's an indication that they're not going to be competed for the buy box, and they're not going to have to give you any troubles when you're selling on this listing. Now the last listing we're going to look at when you're analyzing Keepa is a listing where Amazon is dominating the buy box. So here we have a product that's currently shipped and sold by Amazon. It has four other sellers on it. Let's just take a quick look at those four other sellers. So Amazon Warehouse Deals is on it in an open like new box. And then Amazon has the buy box, even though they're back ordered at 1736. And then Ultra Design, he's $10 higher. He's just repriced ridiculous. He's never going to win the buy box at that price. But let's take a look at this listing here. And now this is a good indication that Amazon's dominating the buy box. So let's expand it to a year. And you can see all these dots here. And you'll be able to see that Amazon is dominating the buy box. So Amazon, new third party. So there is some third party FBAs getting some buy box in there. But 
Amazon's always at the same exact price, right? You can see there, Amazon dominating the buy box. Um, you can see all of these, they say Amazon at the bottom in the buy box. So that means Amazon is winning the buy box. Um, here's a third party seller winning the buy box, but then it's back to Amazon. Um, third party seller back to Amazon. This is a listing that Amazon, this is consistently, you see it says buy box 1736 Amazon. So Amazon's consistently dominating the buy box on here. This is a listing you do not want to purchase inventory for. So those are just four different listings that you want to be analyzing keep before. The first one is a good listing where everything checks out. Price is consistent. You're consistently making money. There's no presence of Amazon. The next has a low dip or a low decline that just consistently decreases down and it means the price is getting lower and lower usually to competition or because of inventory levels. The sellers on those listings have a lot of inventory and they're trying to move that inventory. The next listing we looked at is a listing where Amazon is priced higher than the consistent buy box price and that is a listing that you can purchase inventory for and you can make a lot of money selling on those listings. We make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year selling on listings that Amazon sells. If not more, it might even be millions of dollars a year selling on listings that Amazon sells. So you should be selling on those listings as well. And the last one we take took and the last one we took a look at was a listing that Amazon is dominating the buy box. Now these are listings that you want to stay away from because Amazon will not give up that buy box and you will have that inventory sitting in there sometimes six, nine, even 12 months getting charged inventory storage fees and it's you're not going to be able to turn that money. If you have a thousand, even a couple hundred dollars tied up in a product that's just sitting in Amazon because so even if you drop your price five cents, Amazon matches it and they have the buy box. You drop it 10 cents, they match it, dominate the buy box. You drop it 25 cents, doesn't matter. They will keep going lower and lower on the listings that they dominate the buy box on. And then also we went over how to review this third this third graph down here looking for IP complaints on a listing and also to make sure that when you're looking at a listing you're also checking who the seller is um, if there's other sellers on the listing don't forget just because a product only has three sellers on it does not mean you can't purchase it if you do your research properly now usually two sellers or less we stay away from it but three sellers, do your research because there might be a lot of opportunity to make some serious money on that listing because a lot of people are staying away from it. But if you're using these tactics that I'm showing you, you'll be able to make some money on those listings and make money on a lot of those listings. So here, just to recap, we got sold by GK Hare, who's the manufacturer. And when you're looking at this chart down here, you can see that it dropped from two sellers to one seller pretty frequently and most consistently it's at one seller and then whenever a second seller jumps in they're only on the listing for a day or two and then they get kicked off so that's a huge indication that the listing is submitting ip complaints the brand owner submitting ip complaints and then something else to keep in mind too is super consistent pricing for a very long time so this one goes all the way back to how old is this listing? It should say it here, 284 days, so a little less than a year, and it's pretty much been the same price for an entire year. So um, that's another indication that the brand is consistently selling it, and they probably will attempt to or get you kicked off the listing. And that's it, that wraps up this video. Check you in the next one, stay lit.